Hi, this is Worth Godwin of WorthGodwin.com. In this lesson, I'm going to continue my ongoing series of tips to make it easy to learn computers. And in this particular lesson, what I'm going to be talking about is I'm going to be covering a couple of the traditional ways that people tend to use, tend to try to learn computers. And um, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of these of these uh, methods, and why it's not your fault if you have always felt confused by the computer, frustrated by it, uh, worried that you might be doing something that's going to cause a problem, and uh, why you've never really gotten to the skill level that you and the level of confidence and comfort with a computer that you really deserve to have and are capable of doing. A lot of people that I've talked to over the years, most of them in fact, tend to describe themselves as dummies or idiots or they use some sort of negative term about themselves and they they criticize their own intelligence and capabilities, at least when it comes to the computers. But the thing is, I found that most people are perfectly capable of learning the computer if they learn it in the right way. So that's what the purpose of these videos is for, to give you some tips and help you along with that. Basically what I found, and I, I've kind of studied this problem of uh, computers and people trying to learn them and uh, the way that they tend to get very frustrated by them. And uh, I've studied this for a long time because I've been trying to help people with it. And uh, I have learned over the years a way of explaining things in a very simple, plain English way that makes a lot of sense. And it really does help people understand and feel more confident. So let's talk a little bit about what are the traditional ways that people tend to learn computers. Well, it tends to fall into about four, four or five categories. One is they try to teach themselves. So they'll, you know, they'll go and buy a book or um, uh, just sort of poke around and hope for the best. And that will work for some people, but most people, it's not going to work very well. And uh, they can end up feeling very frustrated by it and very confused because they're, they've never had it explained to them. It's not that they're dumb. That's definitely not the case. It's just they're trying to go about it the wrong way. So... That's one way that people do it. They try to read a book, and you know the book is full of words and maybe a few pictures. And I've talked to a lot of people, and most of them found that the books really were not very helpful. Even with pictures and diagrams and things like that, they might get little bits and pieces here and there that were sort of helpful, but overall, it really didn't help them feel more comfortable and more confident and more skilled with the computer. So. That's the first way. The second way, and I'm not listing these in any particular order, it's just as they come to mind. Um, but the second way that I found people tend to try to learn the computer is they go to someone who they know, like a neighbor or a friend or a family member or somebody, and they ask that person to teach them. The problem with that is that those people that they're trying to go to, they seem like they're really knowledgeable, at least to, from the perspective of someone who is a complete uh, novice at the computer or who has had a computer for a long time but just never really learned it. So they go to that person and it seems like that person knows something and knows a lot, but they generally don't. And maybe they have some information, but a lot of it's misinformation. And so really what it's kind of like is like a 16 year old who is all excited to get their driver's license and they want to get lessons. And instead of going to an adult or better yet, a professional who teaches computers, <laughs> teaches uh, driving rather, um, what they do is they go to a friend of them. If you imagine this hypothetical example, they go to a friend of theirs who's just a little bit older than them, a few years old, a few months older than them. And so a 16 year old goes to another 16 year old and gets lessons from them on how to drive. Well, probably not a good idea <laughs> for reasons I'm sure you can imagine. Um, and so that's really in a very big, very real way, that's very much what happens if someone goes to their neighbor, or their friend, their family member or somebody to try to get them to teach the computer to them. It, it just doesn't work because the person who's trying to teach them, that person doesn't really understand it much better than the person they're trying to teach. And they 
will they have much uh, a lot of misinformation misunderstandings and they pass those mis that misinformation on to the student which obviously ends up leaving the student uh, worse off than before certainly no better than before and then uh, so that's the second reason the th um, uh, second way that people tend to try to learn computers the third option that they tend to try is classes now on the surface going to a class seems like a logical obvious way of learning computers uh, and what is a class for it's for teaching people things makes sense but problem is a couple problems with this I've talked to a lot of people over the years my clients and others who have tried this method and they will go to a class and they end up either finding a teacher, uh, which is, this is true of most com people who are very savvy with computers, they tend not to be very good at teaching. And it all comes down to um, just being really good at a skill. Uh, it, it can be very hard to think back to what it was like as a beginner and to understand how to explain things. And I find a lot of teachers out there uh, or so-called teachers at least, who try to teach computers, they get very frustrated and even condescending with their students and that, that's really inexcusable. Um, but that's not true obviously of all teachers. There could be, there's plenty of teachers out there who try, who are teaching the class, they're good teachers and they're knowledgeable on the subject. But the problem is the class excel, itself. What I've heard over and over again from my students and from my clients is that they will go to these classes and they end up feeling very frustrated and confused and kind of left out because what happens is the teacher is going along at the front of the room teaching 20 30 people all at once and so they don't get any individual attention and they also um, the teacher is generally going at the speed of the fastest student or maybe in some cases even faster and so most of the people who I've talked to about this, they've all reported the same thing. They don't, they end up going to the class, they spend a lot of money, they're driving somewhere, they're going out of their way, it's inconvenient uh, for their schedule and they have to kind of rearrange things to be able to go to the classes. And then at the end of the course, they don't really feel like they've learned anything or, or barely anything at all. And uh, really, there's a lot of problems with classes. I mean, obviously, you have that whole environment where you're trying, one person's trying to teach a whole bunch of people at once and um, going at the speed of the fastest student, like I said. The other problem is most classes, if you think about it, they go for what? 45 minutes, an hour, maybe even a couple hours long? Well, that doesn't really work. There is There was a study done at, I think it was at Cornell University, and uh, it doesn't really matter where it was exactly, but it was a, it was a major university and uh, it was done a few years ago. And I, I tend to follow these things because I'm just really fascinated by the way the human mind works. And basically what the, the bottom line of the study was, they found that people learned best, doesn't matter what age you are, although this obviously may be a bit more true for older people, um, but people learn best in lessons that are half an hour long or less with at least a five minute break between lessons. So obviously, you know, every class you've probably ever gone to as a student uh, or as a, as, a, as a child or as an adult, if you've taken any adult education courses, basically every class goes for 45 minutes an hour long and that basically ends up breaking a fundamental rule of how people learn best. And so the stuff that happens is taught after the first half hour or so tends to go in one year and out of the other. And so it's just not a very good format for trying to learn computers or a lot of other skills, to be honest. So I'm going to continue these tips and I'm going to continue talking about the traditional ways that people try to learn computers in the next lesson. And you can find more lessons like this and free computer help and tips and lessons at worthgodwin.com or look elsewhere on this site that you're watching this video on right now for more of my tips. Until later, this is Worth Godwin of worthgodwin.com.